the most obvious challenge we face, and which seems to hang, as I feel, as a sort of pall or a backdrop over us, which diminishes our mission and limits our aspiration, is the financial situation, which is chronic, structural, and dire, perpetuating a deficit which at times has been close to a million pounds a year. In the Archbishop of Canterbury's charge to me, this is one of the areas he, he is expecting me to sort out. But, but it's not just for me to sort out. I know from past experience how incredibly hard these challenges are. But I also know they are solvable if we all join in, if we all short, share in the responsibility for the solution. One who has joined in and led the fight on this front and to whom I want here to give my heartfelt thanks is George Woodward. George is stepping down after this synod as chair of the Diocesan Board of Finance. He joined uh, the DBF as a director in 1999 and in 2000 became chairman of the Glebe and Investment Committee. In 2009, he was acting chairman and then chairman of the DBF. It has now served two triennia. In 2012, he also became the chairman of the Giving Group, a role in which he has thankfully agreed to continue. George has also been involved in a number of review groups, including of diocesan structures, spending the parish share. He's played a significant representational role, both internally, with numerous evenings to deaneries and parishes, but also nationally. He's been unafraid to put himself in the firing line, to listen and explain, which he does, as we all know, with immense humility. He has a strong, deep personal faith and a loving commitment to the Church of England. He's provided support and encouragement to the diocesan secretary and DBF staff and to this new bishop. He's passionate about Christians being faithful and generous disciples, which he models in his own personal life and in his church life, where he's the local giving advisor. I understand that for those of you who've been members of Synod for a while, you'll know that George is adverse to parishes squirreling away money. He is a lover of wagon wheels and M&Ms. <laughs> George has one more speech to make as chair of the DBF, but can we now again show our huge appreciation for his ministry and service among us? I'm in the process of seeking a suitable candidate to nominate as George's successor, but you will appreciate that this is a tough challenge. Let me underline, as George will, that we have no time left and have to tackle our financial challenge and tackle it drastically. George is about to present a budget to adopt, but the Finance Committee and the Bishop's Council, with George's leadership, have made it abundantly clear that while they commend it, they do so on the understanding that we will not construct a budget in this way again. And for 2017, we will be presented with a budget that makes major inroads into achieving a balanced budget and living within our means. But while we've been looking at this as a financial problem and trying to solve it with, if you like, financial solutions, in fact, we all know that at its heart, it's a spiritual problem. And rearranging the figures does not provide an enduring solution. That will only come as we face the deeper dimensions that are, sent, that are essentially spiritual. 
Let me offer four of these dimensions, four dimensions that I have observed, I think I've observed, there's always a danger that I'm reading into things that aren't there, but four dimensions that I think I've observed in my first six months. First of all, often organizations or communities, when they're faced with what seem like intractable challenges, can find themselves adopting behaviors that then re reinforce the intractability. So the first that I've observed in, in different contexts across the diocese is the awful tendency to blame other people and not to accept our own share of responsibility. There's a tendency in, in some quarters in different places to put the responsibility into other people's laps saying it's not up to us but up to them. It's not my responsibility or my fault but theirs. This is Adam and Eve's sin. It is an original spiritual problem. Secondly, I've seen what seems to be, at times, a tendency to generalize the challenge rather than to look at its particularity. And we do this in all sorts of other contexts where we generalize about groups of people rather than about individuals. We do the same with our problems that we face. So there's a dreadful, pervasive narrative that the diocese is falling short in paying the share. But in fact, when you look at the centenary share chart, we see that most deaneries are doing really well in reaching significant levels of payment. And while we could all do better, the deaneries with major difficulties are relatively few. And so my appeal is, let's spend time helping those deaneries in constructive, not blaming ways, in constructive ways, so that we can together solve these specific issues. We are, after all, all one in Christ, and we do share the responsibility of caring for those and supporting those who need our help. The same applies, I think, when we go down to the next level beyond deaneries. So we put the responsibility on a deanery, but then within the deanery, we discover that some parishes are paying well, or benefices are paying well, and others are struggling. Let's be careful in our analysis and careful in our response so that we become much more specific in how we tackle these challenges, challenges in which we are all partners. If I can give a second example of the way in which we generalize rather than look at the particularity of a situation, we hear the church is in decline. But while it's true that the majority of parish congregations are declining in number, the majority of church goers attend churches that are either holding their own or are growing. So let's look at those congregations that are growing and see what we can learn from them. This is all part of the Growing in God initiative, which I completely support. And then let's help those that are declining to see what the reasons are. And there will be different reasons in different contexts. And see how we can bring about the change that God is calling us to. Saying we are all in a state of decline or using that narrative about ourselves prevents us tackling the real issues and helping those who are in difficulty or with specific challenges. Helping one another brings me to a third observation. I've encountered what I can only call fragmentation across the diocese. Now that's hardly surprising when it seems to be built into our DNA, East and West Suffolk, a bishop in Ipswich and his cathedral in Bury. 
but it's pervasive also because of the spread, the geographical spread of many small communities across the diocese and the way in which that engenders, in so many cases, isolation, and particularly isolation among clergy. I don't think this is a situation that most of us want to be in, because we understand the oneness of the body of Christ, and that integration and interconnectedness is intrinsic to the body's flourishing. But it is the situation that we often find ourselves in, and it means that not only do we not benefit from being in relationship with one another, but we also lack the means to learn from one another about the experiences of faith and of enabling the church to thrive. So I can sit with one incumbent in one benefice and listen to the ways in which they are tackling the challenges of having umpteen PCCs, umpteen AGMs, umpteen sets of church wardens, and how they're tra tackling that in ingenious, constructive, and positive ways. And then, a bit further down the road, I listen to another incumbent faced with the same challenge who hasn't heard about that solution. If we had ways in which we could tell one another what is working and what is not working, it would enable the thriving of all of us. I was immensely heartened at the Rural Deans consultation this week when the Rural Deans themselves decided to pair up across the two archdeaconries to provide mutual support and prayer for one another. Building links, networks, and relationships across the diocese seem to me to be essential if we are to experience the spirit's enlivening of the whole church. Separation, isolation, keeping ourselves to ourselves, not being open is inimical to our call as Christians. And while we know that, we also know that we can hide from others when we are feeling anxious or insecure. But fragmentation is the opposite of what God longs for the world. Our witness is to behave in the opposite direction. Lastly, we would all say that it is, and I'm learning to say this, that it's one of the great appeals of this wonderful county that people are modest, understated, and don't proclaim what is good or great about it to anyone outside. We keep quiet about what is precious to us. And I stumble across treasure after treasure, whether person or place, and when I declare how amazing this is, I get a sort of, yep, a stifled reply. This, the argument goes, helps Suffolk stay the way it is. But if we then apply this approach to our evangelism, then people are going to have to stumble over Jesus without our help and offer just a stifled yep when they tell us how they have found Jesus, the meaning and value of all life. While we may want to keep Suffolk a secret, let's not keep Jesus a secret. I'm sure if we approach all the challenges we have as spiritual challenges and enable one another to develop spiritual wisdom that accepts responsibility works hard to resolve the particular rather than blame the general, builds relationships of fellowship and support, and declares our faith in Jesus with confident humility, then even in the most intractable, we will find the enlivening presence of our generous, faithful, and loving God. I said I had a request. It is this. 
It is that we all commit to pray for what we have to face in this diocese. That we pray for solutions to our deficit, to decline where it's happening. We pray to build relationships of prayerful support across the diocese. And that we pray that God's overwhelming, generous love in, this, in our lives and across the county will become realized and known as we, the risen body of Christ, show and share his love for everyone. Thank you.